Okay, let's get started. Jacob here at Smetting Performance. Today's video is going to be a 13 to 1 compression 427 cubic inch LS7 engine build. The foundation for this build is going to be a brand new GM LS7 engine block. The LS7 block comes with billet steel main caps that are doweled and pin located to the block so they can't shatter or move at all at really high RPM. It also comes standard with a press in sleeve because this has a 4.125 engine bore. This customer previously had the stock LS7 out of his Z06 and something happened, the engine overheated and it, it ended up cracking a sleeve resulting in a failure of the motor. So he brought us the old engine, we tore it all apart, found the crack and now we're getting him a brand new LS7 block because it did crack through the sleeve through the aluminum. So that block, you can't save it unfortunately. But we can save his crankshaft. So we're going to reuse the crankshaft out of his original LS7 and we're going to run a custom 13 to 1 compression dome JE piston. This piston has the asymmetrical skirt design to save weight. So you can notice that this skirt is very thin compared to this skirt because this skirt is the thrust load face of the piston. So a little bit thinner on this side, a little less weight. We're going to run our Smetting 4340 forged steel connecting rod. And on these LS7 crankshafts, they come from the factory with some tungsten already pressed into them. You can see two in the back. Actually, they come with, I think, one in the back and two in the front already pressed in. But they run a lightweight titanium connecting rod. So by us going to the super heavy-duty steel rod, we also needed to add, um, I put four slugs of tungsten into this crank. You can see them right there, two in the front, and then I popped two in the back. So the crank is perfectly balanced under one gram front and rear like we always do. We're going to run our smetting rod with a custom JE piston. And then the camshaft for this beast is a beast. Let me get the card for you. So this camshaft is 254 degrees of duration at 50 on the intake and 265 on the exhaust. Valve lift coming in at about 660 intake and 650 exhaust on a 113 plus 5. And that 113 plus 5 I really like to run with the stock LS style intake manifolds, the long runner low profile ones. I want to give it some LSA but I want to get the intake center line at about 108. That seems to really respond well. Um, this guy is going to run the stock LS7 cylinder head with an aftermarket port program. Obviously they've been fixed and should be good to go. So, block's brand new, it's already been plateau honed, it's 100% good to go, the crank's already balanced. We're going to start with main bearing clearance, then we'll go to rod bearing clearance, we'll gap the rings for this application, and then we can stuff it.
The main bearings that I am planning to run in this engine have now been installed to the block. All the caps and the bolts and all the hardware are torqued as if we were going to run this engine for real. Now we're going to find the exact diameter of the main journal on his LS7 crank and then we'll be able to zero that to a dial bore gauge to measure our oil bearing clearance. With a full set of standards on all five main caps, I have exactly two thou main bearing clearance, which is just perfect because the aluminum's gonna warm up a little bit. That's gonna grow to probably 2.3 to 2.4, and that is right on the money for this application. seven uses sort of an internal dry sump design where technically the oil is reserved in an external reservoir but it still has a crank driven internal oil pump it's kind of cool it kind of bridges the gap between a true wet sump and a true dry sump you do get some performance benefits of having the oil located outside of the pan but it's still packaging cost effective like an internal wet sump so pretty cool the crankshaft is final installed. The camshaft and the oil pump are final installed. Now I'm gonna jump over to the rods and pistons and I'm gonna start with rod bearing clearance and then we'll do the piston rings. Rod bearing clearances are now set. I've got about 2.2 thou across the rods. Something that I recommend people do is after you set up, you know, your micrometer to the crank, zero the dial bore gauge to the mic, and then check all your rods, come back and re-zero these together. You, be, you might be surprised that sometimes you weren't 100% right or maybe the thermal expansion changed things a little bit. So I always zero it, check it, come back, Make sure it's still true zero, and then maybe even pop it in a couple more. That way we know a thousand percent what our rod bearing clearance actually is in reality, because it has to work perfectly. You know, we're dealing with uh, almost 8,000 RPM, 13 to one race engine, essentially. It is a kind of a race motor at this point with the cam and the compression. So everything needs to be a thousand percent perfect. 
Next, I'm going to start gapping the piston rings. This customer is strictly going to run naturally aspirated, no nitrous, no power adder ever. So we can run the rings a little bit on the tighter side, tighten up that ring seal, and, um, and continue on with the build. Pistons, rods are assembled, rings are gapped, deburred, and assembled on the pistons. Remember, when you're done, they should spin completely free. We are running a steel top ring with a Napier second and a light tension oil ring. We are running tri metal grooved, narrowed, I'm sorry, tri metal chamfered and narrowed rod bearings and tri metal main bearings as well. Pistons have the coated skirts, asymmetrical design, 2618 forged. This is all really, really premium high end stuff. I'm now going to deep clean the engine block and then we can put these units into the block. Rotating assembly is all assembled inside of this LS7 engine block. Went super smooth. We've now got some nice dome pistons in there to raise the compression over factory. And we have a matching larger camshaft to take advantage of the extra compression. So next I'm going to measure the deck height of this build so the customer can order the correct thickness head gaskets to get the correct quench that I want to see out of it. And from then, all I have left to do is put the timing cover on, the oil pan on, and this guy is done. So rocking the piston, I have 10 thousandths positive out of the hole going one way and 8 thousandths negative in the hole rocking it the other. If you average those together, I have exactly one thou out of the hole on this piston, so we're going to order a 40 thou head gasket. Boom, there it is. 13 to 1 LS7 short block refresh by Smetting Performance all finished up and ready for the customer. To recap, we rebalanced the factory LS7 crankshaft. We put our really high quality H-beam rod with a nice set of JE asymmetrical skirt dome pistons. We did a custom camshaft in this build. Let me give you all little specs on it for the, the spec guys. 
254, 265 duration at 50, and about 0.659 intake lift, 0.650 exhaust lift on a 113 plus five. Should haul the mail easily. In next week's video, we're gonna show y'all a pretty unique LS combination that we're putting together. It's something a little different and I think you guys are gonna like it. So make sure you like and subscribe so you can watch that video next Wednesday when we upload it and I'll see y'all later.